my dear friend Jane Flores is joining me right now. She is, um, in addition to her role as the Bureau of Women's Affairs, she also administers a program that deals with um, a very, very sensitive matters. Um, Jane, I, I know your your roles. Um, you take these uh, this responsibility very, very seriously. And um, a forum was held. I mean, should we say forum or uh, I know it's, it's not. A, not it's, quite... a, it's really an information session. Yeah. Okay. But but um, cer certainly absolutely critical to our understanding. Um, it is dealing with uh, harassment in the workplace. And I, I really, really value your input on this and for, and for you and your team for putting on this event. So thank you. Well, thank you. We This is a Bureau, a U.S. Department of Labor, a Women's Bureau. It's called a Fostering Access Rights and Equity Grant. We got this grant last year for $250,000 to hire some people to help me to put on. We have 15 information sessions that we're holding around the island. Some of them are going to be in villages. Some of them are to clubs in particular. And some of them, there, there may be a couple that we're going to do virtually. We're actually going to approach the Department of Corrections to go in to the, the women who are in prison but going to soon be released. Because what this is, is a program about workplace harassment. What it is, what it looks like in the workplace, or what you may be experiencing and how to deal with it. And, and that is the critical is, question. What is it like? Right. You know, how this came about was, you know, there was this opportunity for this grant and they approached me and said, hey, do you want to apply for this? And I said, sure. So I met with Jeff Sablon, who is the, um, he is the, I think, director, not the director, um, he is head of the Fair Employment Practice Division over at the Department of Labor. And I said, Jeff, you know, there are nine components of this grant. You can only apply for one which one should we apply for? You know, it was like wages or um, you know, all things that happen in the workplace. And he said, well, you know, the thing that we know the least about here, but we know that it happens is workplace harassment. So he said, you know, my, my input would be to do something like that. So, so we did that. We hired Allied Human Resources, Grace Donaldson, to put together a presentation. It's a wonderful presentation. We had our first meeting last night in the Sinahanya um, Auditorium, which I am amazed, Robert Hoffman has done a great job with community grants, getting this auditorium put up. You know, it's excellent it's free work, Mr. If, Mayor. Congratulations. Yes, it's free if you, you know, as long as you have a component of, you know, people that are underserved that can go for free. And this whole, our, our whole thing is free. These informational sessions are free. Mm -hmm. But so what this is about is we are, telling people what workplace harassment looks like. Now, you, you can be harassed by age, religion, ec um, ethnicity, pregnancy, gender, you know, whether it's your, your gender of choice or, you know, sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. There are like seven different components of harassment. And what Dr Grace does in these informational sessions is she goes through and tells you all about them pay is a harassment. So for example, if you are from Chuuk and your boss is, let's say, Howley, and your boss, you know, has something against you because you're from Chuuk or, or one of the outer islands, and he gives you all of the, the you know, the night shifts, and even though you see everybody else being rotated, and you're getting the night shift, or you're getting the, the, the shifts that nobody wants, and you never get out of that, that is creating a hostile work environment. That is harassment. Yeah, by definition, and, that's also discrimination. And it's discrimination. And right. so you can, you know, what do you do about it? Well, you know, you can approach your supervisor. If they do nothing, then you can approach, you know, the big boss. If they do nothing, you can go to the Department of Labor. But it recognizes what is harassment. One of the, one of the components, you know, it's like pregnancy. If you are pregnant, you know, and Pregnancy is a temper is considered for the workplace a temporary disability. So if you are pregnant, oh, I didn't know that they they need to give you, especially like if your job calls for you to be a heavy lifter and you're pregnant and you're you know lifting boxes. You know, at some point in your pregnancy, you have to stop lifting the boxes because it could be it could adversely affect your pregnancy. Of course. So and on the, Guam, we have such reverence for women too. And it's like, well, what are, you, what are you doing making a pregnant coworker, you know, like exert herself? And so so the boss can say, okay, well, let's, let's give you an adaptation, a temporary adaptation. But if your boss 
put you in a position that's lower pay, that's not right. You shouldn't be able to do that. He has to mm. put you in a position that is for equal pay. And if he says, well, you're pregnant, you can't do this. So I have to put you in this and this is the only position. That's not right. You have to you know, have the same pay. Um, one of the most interesting things was we are training interpreters for two. So we have some Chukis interpreters. We have a Korean interpreter. We have Kosryan. We have Pompeian. Just because the laws are U.S. laws and they may not be able to understand exactly what all of these laws mean. So we have interpreters and we're training the interpreters who are young people from Manila. We partnered with Manila and with the, the Korean Women's Association and the Chinese Women's Association, we're, we're reaching out to them. But for example, these young people did not realize that, you know, your employer might say, hey, I'm just going to pay you in cash because you'll get more money. You won't have to do the deductions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're young, you think, hey, cool, I get more money, right? But no, not cool, A, because A, it's breaking the law, and B, they are cheating you out of benefits. And we were telling these young kids that, you know, now you might think, yeah, I'm going to get a couple dollars more because I don't have to pay the government for FICA or, or Social Security or Medicaid, Medicare. But, you know, I said, you're young now, but if you work, you know, the whole idea is you work into the system and then when you get old enough to retire, you get Social Security and you get Medicare. And right. when you're 65, you're going to need that Medicare. Well, Jane, may, may and I, they may, don't, I was, I'm sorry, ahead. I was going to say, may, may I ask, is it therefore, as part of your training um, and part of the knowledge you're imparting on the community, that if you are being, you know, I, I don't want to say subjected, but it, like if you are in that situation where you're be, be, being paid in yeah. cash as opposed to traditional payroll ways, it is your responsibility as an employee to to report that. Well, you sh you know, we're saying you should report this. Yeah. And we did have a young man last night. We had a young man who attended and he said, you know, he was saying, look, you know, if I am being discriminated against at work and I complain, then they're just going to make my life even more miserable or fire me. And, yeah. and Grace's responsibility was that's retaliation and that is part of workplace harassment. And you need to complain to the Department of Labor about that and they will, you know, talk to the company. There might, there may be a fine or whatever, because they can't do that. And it's like with anything, it's like with sexual assault or, you know, anything. If you don't complain, then nothing is going to happen. The problem continues. Yeah, the persists. problem continues. Yeah. So, you know, with regard to the pay, you, you can take your paycheck and go to the Department of Labor and say, hey, this is what I'm being paid. I'm just being getting a regular, you're either getting a regular personal check, yeah. you know, with no deductions. And, and this is, you know, and she is, Grace is wonderful. She has all the rules down. She's just amazing. And she was saying, if you are treated as a regular employee, like if you have to show up on time, you know, eight o'clock to five o'clock every day, if you're expected to show up five days a week, eight to five, you get a certain lunch hour, that's being treated as a regular employee. You should be being paid with deductions and benefits. And we're, now, we're not just yeah. talking when we say employees, not right. just private sector. This is also like Gov Guam and federal. Public, right? right. This is right. also public sector, but you know, and larger companies and, and, you know, GovGuam, you know, they have HR departments. And so, you know, if you are being harassed, you can go to an HR department and they don't want that on their record. So usually, so what we're mainly trying to reach out to is the smaller companies, the workers that have work in a company where there's no HR department mm. and where sometimes the employer may not even know. And, you know, the Department of Labor is working with the employers, but so this is for the employees. But what we're saying is, you know, he was, this young man was saying, you know, I'm going to get worse harassed. And she was saying, look, you know, you can either put up with it or you can say something, you know, it's, 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 it's your choice. But if you're right. putting up with it, that's against the law. They are breaking the law. And, you know, if you don't do anything about it, they're going to continue to break the law. And, you know, sometimes... It is a situation where, you know, I remember when um, Kim was an engineer at GPA and we were dating and I went to see him one time at GPA and one of his coworkers had a cubicle and he had all of these posters pasted up in the cubicle of, you know, women in bikinis and, you know, like the Farrah Fawcett uh, 
you know, bathing suit poster. You could actually get away with that in those days. <laughs> very suggestive things. And you could yeah. get away with that in the early 80s. But yeah, I was going to say that, that was a while ago. That is not anymore. You know, that, that was doesn't play today. Ago. Right. That was, you know, almost 40 years ago. So yeah. it doesn't play today. So, you know, and, you know, Grace was saying, if you, if, if the behavior that you're experiencing in the workplace makes you feel uncomfortable or it's, or it's hostile toward you, nine times out of 10, that is workplace harassment. And you need to speak to somebody about it. If you can speak to your supervisor or a supervisor that you trust or the head of the company, or if they don't do anything, then you go to the department of labor. And, and Jane, I greatly appreciate how you said, you know, like it's not only for, you know, the big companies who are resourceful enough to have human resources uh, departments, because I had the great honor of actually emceeing uh, Sherm's event like last week, right. and there were wonderful discussions about, you know, the role of HR and, and the scope of it, um, right. but, uh, but obviously we're not only trying to nip um, the existing uh, problems and, and perhaps the negligence that's going on right now, but much in the same way that we now understand mental health is much broader than we thought before. Um, wor workplace harassment is, the, the scale and scope of it is so much wider than, than most people right. probably recognize, right? So we are just organizing our next meeting is, so everyone please pay attention. If you live in the Timooning area and you think that you might be you know, experiencing harassment, our next meeting is August 30th, Tuesday at the Timooning Senior Center. So it's at six o'clock, we're gonna have some soup and sandwiches and you know, we'll have a little, you know, we have a survey for you to fill out and a little gift. And so please come because this is something that everybody needs to know and especially I had a woman call after I, I was on K57 and she called and said, you know, I'm going to make my daughters go to this because they're starting out in the workplace. We're going to go to GCC. We're going to talk to the there students because um, this is something that, you know, people, young people need to know, and then they can go out through word of mouth. But this is this grant, the meetings will go from now through March, 2023. We're going to have two a month around the island. Uh, bwa.guam.gov, look for the schedule. And we will also have, uh, it'll be on the radio. We'll have some newspaper announcements. We'll have flyers and posters. So the grant pays for all of this. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, getting some money out into the community that way too. I would so, hope um, any, or, any organization would want to take advantage of this because, yeah. you know, I mean- And I'll send you, you know, I'll send you- Participants can go back and be, of, be yeah. an advocate for their yeah. for their organization and just say, yeah. look, this is, this is where we are today. And yeah. like, you know, Many people are probably in not compliant yeah. with this. Right. And and then they may not, they may be doing, they may not even know. Like, you know, you might have a small company where the the male workers are, you know, running around, you know, maybe saying something that, you know, they think is exactly. funny, but it's not, you know, to the woman who's hearing it. And the reason the Department of Labor did this was because women have been more adversely affected affected by the pandemic because the industries that they are mainly employed in, you know, hospitality, retail, um, medical, you know, healthcare, those are the, the companies that have been most adversely affected. And they were finding out that women were staying in their jobs and putting up with all this stuff because they were afraid to lose their jobs because there, you know, there weren't a lot of jobs available. So they said, hey, we have to do some outreach here. So we are doing the outreach. So Tuesday, August 30th, to Mooning uh, Senior Center, 6 p.m. And I will send you the schedule for your community calendar for the rest of them. Okay. You've, you've still got it, Jane, a, a journalist for life. And and, and I know you, you've sat in the chair that, that, that I am privileged to sit in right now. So obviously you said the very first question, anybody watching this, the very first question is actually what? And, and exactly yeah. what is workplace harassment? So uh, you and your team are doing our community a great service by, by putting this on and and allowing us to have that understanding. So thank you, Jane. And you're doing a great service by allowing us to get the word out. So thanks so much, Jason. Uh, always a pleasure working with you. Jane Flores, everybody, the one and only. We will be right back with the hotspot. Hey, make sure to attend that Tamooning um, event. Wonderful, wonderful hey. information. And it makes workplaces better. It makes Guam better. So Jane, thank you once again. Take care. All right, we'll be back right after this, everybody.